You and your allies work together to fend off the furious onslaught of the mysterious Time Mage in Kingdom Rush, Rift in Time. Welcome to Tantrum Mouse Studio D. I'm Kevin Dupp. And I'm Intern Dan, and today we're going to take a look at Kingdom Rush by Lucky Duck Games and Ironhide Games Studio. It's a two to four player cooperative tower defense game. It's based on the mobile game of the same name. It takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. And we're going to look at the prototype components. There's double sided map boards, player hero boards and minis, damage and game tokens, tower cards, enemy horde cards, horde trays and these clear tower construction sight cards. During the game you'll have cards with enemies on them entering the path trying to get to your base. You and your team have to work together to play your tower cards and to move your heroes in an effort to destroy the enemies and save the day. You win the game if you eliminate the portal cards as they come through, but you do lose if too many enemies escape or if one of the portals escapes. To set up the game, First choose which scenario you want to play and set up the board accordingly. Lay out the board, the construction site locations, place the starting waves of enemies, and give each player their starting towers depending on their hero and how many players are in the game. You'll also create a spawn deck of enemy cards and portals. Finally, place 7 life on the exit point. During the game, everyone will take their turn at the same time. You're working together to try to find the most efficient way to defeat enemies on the path. On your turn, you can play any and all of your tower cards onto one of your construction sites. If I'm purple, I can only place my tower on a purple site. Any towers I choose not to play are then passed to the player on my left. We'll talk about that a little later. When you play a tower, immediately place damage on the horde card according to what your tower says. The archer, for example, can shoot at a range of 2, while the mage can shoot this corner piece but only at a range of 1. You also have to keep the damage in the same orientation as is shown on the card. You can also move your hero onto a horde and use either its basic attack or a special attack if you've purchased it. Once you've covered up all the enemies on a card, that card is defeated and will be destroyed. Once you're done playing any cards and using heroes, remove any destroyed horde cards and receive gems as shown on the back of the horde. Your heroes will take damage if they were on the destroyed card. You then advance any trays that were not destroyed. If you have a hero or soldier on the card, they stop any movement, but they also receive damage. Next, new enemy hordes will enter the path. If a tray would move or spawn into an occupied space, it skips forward to the next available space, so make sure you leave room. Now you can upgrade towers. Any towers that were passed to the left instead of being played get upgraded to the next level tower. This new tower will be stronger, but will also be critical in taking down those portals. You then pick up any tower cards you played and put them back into your hand. Finally, you can purchase new towers or new hero abilities if you have enough gems. Keep going through these steps until you've destroyed the enemy portals or until your enemies have overwhelmed you. These horde cards range from pretty easy to a tough challenge. Some cards have extra speed, which will make them move twice if you don't cover them up. Others can't get covered by magic attacks and so on. The portals are especially powerful. They have a number in the middle that shows what level of tower you have to have to even attack it. Then when you attack, it sucks your tower into the portal and you put it back into the supply. But thankfully your tower cards can be pretty powerful too. For example, the archer can only cover two spots vertically to start, but the marksman can cover an L shape and then the sharpshooter can cover an L, but you can turn it whichever direction you want. I remember playing this game as a browser-based game in 2011, the mobile version, and then they brought it out as an app that I tried again later. I really enjoyed it then, so when I saw this hit the table, I was like, wow, I really want to check this out. I'm excited that they got Ironhide Game Studio involved so that it really feels a lot like the browser game, the, the mobile game, uh, in board version. I, I really like that. And I actually am not really familiar with the mobile version, um, so... I didn't really know what this universe, or should I say kingdom, is all about. <laughs> uh, but I really like the decisions you make in the game. Uh, for example, should I, should we purchase uh, new character upgrades, or should we get tower defense cards, or should there, should there be a combination of those that you're purchasing, and who should get those upgrades? So you have to really work together as a team. 
One thing I appreciate here is that the art is identical to the mobile game, so it really has a familiar feel throughout the whole game, and the art is done well. Lucky Duck always does a great job integrating the board game from the mobile app. And the graphic design makes sense too. I love the transparent cards that you place on the board. The game is really kind of a puzzle too. It's not just rolling dice trying to get as much damage as you can. You really have to think through, do I play this tower now? Do I pass it off to my friend and let him upgrade it to use for later? Uh, sometimes you're even uh, debating whether or not you should pass it to try and get it around the table because of where those construction sites are. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that puzzle aspect and trying to fit all the pieces together and working a lot with your team to find the best solution possible. So Tantrum House was able to play three scenarios that were given to us in the prototype. Mm -hmm. One of them was pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> and the third scenario was super, super yes. difficult. And you played this with two players, right? I did. And I think, I mean, it works well with two players, but I definitely think with four, it got easier because you have more heroes that you're able to move around and, and tie those cards down. So if you like Tetris style games, if you like tower defense, or you like co-op games, uh, then uh, check out Kingdom Rush. And if, even if you like the franchise Kingdom Rush, yeah. you need to check out Kingdom Rush Rift in Time from Lucky Duck Games on Kickstarter. And we'd love for you to subscribe to Tantrum House.